Hello, I am Michael Bishop. I am the uh, singer for the shock rock band Guar. I was originally the bass player, Beefcake the Mighty. I also uh, played in a band called Keepone. Uh, I'm going to be talking about bass guitar today and some of the stuff that I think about it, talking about the instrument, about the equipment, and all that stuff. So let's have some fun. All right, so the first one I picked is Sonder Commando. And Sonder Commando is, uh, is on this toilet earth. But I went with this one because it, it shows like what I think might be kind of my style. I don't know, is like I try to, I use a lot of open strings and I am very interested in dissonance. The other thing is that this song is, is, is really based in um, Richmond, Virginia. It's a town that has, especially in the mid 80s to the 90s and even today, like you get, it has a lot of good players that had a certain style, just a certain sound. And I know the guys in Lamb of God has talked about this before, you know, and, and Guar was very influenced by that sound. And I think in some, do, to some degree, we, at least with some of our tunes, like, you know, became part of that sound. But like, this was a song that I always thought of as being very Richmond, right? And, and that is that it almost has like, a, it's metal, but it has sort of a deconstructed feel and a, a, a really almost like an industrial music feel. You can hear like this technique here on Sonder Commander, and I'll play it, you'll hear it at the beginning. That's the bass. Dong, ding, dong, dong, ding, dong. And that's just like, you know, open off of those, like, you know, the, that's some shit I do all the time. That's why I wanted to put it on here, because. And the weird thing is that it sounds so cool, but it's straight up chromatic, right? It's just like. But because of the octave, it sounds different, you know? So that's Sonder Commando, the song Issue of Tissue. You know, this song, it's so easy, right? But, uh, and even the last one we played, I mean, there's nothing special about that. It's just, it's really in how it's played that's cool. But Issue of Tissue, this is another tune that like, uh, it's bass playing a role. It's just attack. It's a hundred percent attack, you know? And it's, you know, and, and this is big time influenced by uh, Paul Raven, who played with Ministry and played with uh, Killing Joke. Um, just that, you know, it's just like, there's a Killing Joke called, song called Requiem. And this is really stolen from that. Like, you know, it's like, it's just, and if you stay on those, just like sort of dumb, like it's dumb. I mean, you're just following the, just drum, you know, but then if you break out of that, when you break out of it, it makes it sound so huge, you know, and it leaves room for the drums to play 16th notes inside of it that make it drive, you know, and here he goes, you're going to be doing that. Yeah, but anyway, just brutal, simple. Harvey Vieg, off of Boar's uh, second album, Scum Dogs of the Universe. I wanted to do it because it was, you know, an example of like Guar sort of making, uh, like we wanted to do a song, like, you know, the butthole surfers were really popular at the time. I loved the way that they did these sort of tribal drums, you know, in a butthole surfer show at the time. I mean, I would go ahead and say probably the two best live bills in underground were Guar and the Butthole Surfers, and we played together a lot. And it was, you know, I mean, I was just really influenced by the sort of, it was almost like a fertility ritual or something, these shows. It was just like, you know, and we wanted to do some stuff that was in that vein, but that was also metal. And at the same time, like, it's silly. Like, we wanted to do something that was, uh, it's a little silly too, right? So it has this sort of feel like a, kind of dancey, literally, like dum dum ding da dum dum da 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 dum dum ding da dum dum da 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 dum dum Like, that's what I was thinking of, like some goofball shit. And again, it's like a misinterpretation, right? Because like, like bass doesn't do that in that kind of music, right? Like the bass is more like doing something else that lets everything play off of it. But then I also really like the sort of like, again, it's that sort of open note and then working off a dissonance uh, and tritones and stuff like that, which is, uh, there's a lot of tritones in Guar stuff. This dude, 
His chanter is just out of tune. Listen to that. How are you going to do that? Like you just roll up. That's messed up, man. It's all right. And you can't do that legally, by the way. Like just lift some shit off of a movie. Like, you know, <laughs> you're not supposed to do that. So if you're listening at home, kids, you don't want to just stick Marlon Brando on your record. Man. So you just show to bass just following the kick, man. It's, it's all I knew how to it's all I know how to do. Like you know. And then there, there, there's the uh makes me laugh you know just playing with the kick drum all the time like uh that's what i think bass is supposed to do really viking death machine it was one of the ones that i played on uh blood of gods and, and it's fun to play it's just swampy <laughs> gonna take it through to the change because the change has pretty cool uh, riff in it but Right, it's just following those the, the the drum kit. Like, I don't I don't write my, <laughs> I don't know. I just I, it's just what I've always done is like you just like write the the licks because otherwise it feels really kind of I don't know. Bass is kind of an embarrassing instrument, right? Like, I mean, you should be a little bit ashamed of it. I feel like so. <laughs> So you don't want to, like, you know, be doing a bunch of crazy shit. Like, you know, I mean, if you follow the drums, then it's like you're just playing your role. I'm just kidding. It's not embarrassing. It's, it's a great instrument. It's the best instrument besides piano. This new album, uh, New Dark Ages, and this is the last Guar song that I'm going to do here. There's a song called uh, Starving Gods. The reason I wanted to show this one is just that it does the same thing, right? It's an open, uh, open versus, like, fretted um and and some dissonance in there i think qualifies as my sound starving gods same shit right And this song just started off with this bass line, like that's all I had. Um, the whole thing's built around that and the idea of doing a, I wanted to do a soca. And I know the bass line is not a soca bass line, like there's no way that somebody playing soca music would play this, but like, just sort of 
is a jam that we always had. You know, it goes well with a, the, the line goes well with a, with a soak of beat anyway. Yes. It's so stupid. The gods are starving for rock and roll. They're ridiculous. Keep On was a fun band and it was a 90s band. It's very, to me, it feels very 90s. These songs are different than Guar though because they, they're initially, they wind up being through composed, but they're all just like, everything comes out of improvisation. So this is Eeny Meeny. This is... That's the, the ultimate, like, open versus fretted sort of speed, you know? It's just like... That's any meany, and like you know, and then it. It's hard to do it right. In the end of it, I'm gonna fast forward. Well, actually, it's right here. So it's just sort of constructing the chords out of but doing it the same way like with the open stuff the sort of dissonant stuff and letting it kind of ring out against the roots oh loud yeah the big dashes all right <laughs> this is a great example of how how this band would write music though like it's just a hundred percent it's also like slavish to the fucking kick drum but it was all improv stuff and this is like that part's built around this sort of figure like this but when we record it the chord sounds too too muddy you know like, <laughs> just follow the drums dude it's weird because this this part has like never really been right like like that part that you like in the middle of it uh like like it's very very hard to do even back in the day, it was hard to do, right? But this, like, mm -hmm. like to make it sound right. That's it. <laughs> You know, um, so that that's, I like doing the examples like that a little bit better. Like, you know, <laughs> cause it's uh, uh, a, a little freer. I guess I should play Silly Sally just a little bit of it and then we'll be done. So this is a. Johnny probably wants me to show him the the, the diddle. <laughs> There you go. <laughs>
So, all right.